Sure. I knew early on this is what I wanted to do, and it all started back in 1985 with a nine-year-old named Tommy Ho. Rick didn't have a junior program at the time. My, my parents took a group clinic lesson with him, and uh, my dad said, you're going to teach my kids. He became the most dominant junior ever. He won about 15 gold balls by the age of 15. Rick is one of the best motivators that, that I've ever come across. He wrote me letters almost every day talking about, you've got to dream big. You're going to be playing professional tennis and I was 10 years old. I felt like I could do anything. After that, Capriati came, then the Williams sisters came, and people wanted to stay with me, and so I said, I'm start an academy. When I think of Rick and the impact that he's had on my life, my parents clearly had the largest impact, but he was the second most important figure throughout my, my junior career. And everything that I am today really comes from everything that I learned from Rick. Yeah, no, there's much more than tennis, you know? He helps kids get better grades in school, and it all just comes back to the attitude and the mental part and just how you view life. And I know he always says that, flip it in your mind. Like, yeah, all the billboards or his quotes that he just comes up with. I'm surprised some of them don't rhyme, because most of the time the stuff he texts me, they're rhymes. Him growing up, it was pretty hard, and he really just started from nothing and he built his way up to where he is right now and I know I'm sure he probably used all of this stuff along the way and seeing Venus, Serena and Richard I could just tell it made him really happy. Richard when we saw him he just kept saying thank you so much you took us out of the ghetto. <laughs> so he wakes up and then 4 a.m. in the pitch dark he starts running around the neighborhood like a madman. I never knew that he did that and I'm driving to Starbucks at like 4.30 and I just see someone running and I realize it's him. So I drove next to him and he's just running 4.30 in the morning, let's go down the street. Just so structured. I always tell him he's like an alien because he's the closest thing I've ever seen to perfect. He's never late, he's always early, like he just really doesn't mess up. He never forgets anything, like it's crazy doesn't forget anything. Even when I met Venus and Serena for the first time at the premiere in LA, they were telling me, they're like, we prepared him. We prepared him to be a father. I don't think anything changes him. I feel like he's the type of person that uh, he'll forever be humble and forever have a heart of gold. And no matter what level he gets to, he's not gonna change, you know? Going to the top, Miami Open, Wimbledon, sponsors, all the the Big Bang, everything. That's a professional athlete you see right there. These girls can't move like that. They don't have what it takes like that. She's, they don't have that toughness. They don't have it, and she does. She, it's just Gabby just technically is more sound than they are, you know. And that's just the god honest truth. It's a tough father, tough kid. One, two, three, four. One of the most uh, revered in the history of the game, even guys like John and Pat McEnroe, send their kids to Rick Macy down in Boca. You go through the, the list, it's just a who's who of tennis players. The passion that he puts you know, in the kids to play the game, I think, is probably uh, his, his biggest contribution. He's an extraordinary coach. He's not ordinary, he's extraordinary. He has a way of bringing intensity to the court, and you kind of develop from there and start bringing your own intensity. He's just an amazing coach, and I would never want to leave. I still love to be on the tennis court. Put the weight on the back foot, bang. His work ethic is, is just unsurpassed. He really gets the maximum out of everybody and everybody knows that. He has a way of bringing whatever's in your child out. He really understands children and how to get the best out of them even on their worst day. He's an impassioned coach and you can tell this is what he was meant to do with his life. Work hard, run for every ball, all of the Macyisms on the sign he implements into his way of teaching. I've done this for a long time and I evaluate talent in all sports. A lot of times people can look at a ranking or they can kind of look how big someone is or you know just what experience they have and I don't really go there. Did the parents play any type of sports? You know whether it be football, baseball, basketball, hockey, maybe the footwork's already baked in extra crispy, the jumping ability, you know the environment that you're brought up in is huge. You don't want to pamper someone. You have to be rough, you have to be tough, you have to have an amazing work ethic. 
and even with Venus and Serena, when no one really saw it, okay, on the outside, there was arms and legs and hair and beads flying everywhere. Uh, and when people see those videotapes of Venus and Serena at 9 and 10, I've had literally tens of thousands, not hundreds, tens of thousands of people saying, my kid's better than that. And think about it. One's going down as the greatest player that ever picked up a racket, and the other probably would have been the same way if she wouldn't have had to play her sister. So how does that even go into the thinking? You know, it's what I saw under the hood. I know how to extract greatness, and I know how to push buttons, and I know how to get the most out of someone. And uh, they can be dead tired, and I can flip the script, and all of a sudden make something fun. They're not tired anymore. The best of the best of the best of all the rest are the most positive individuals that ever walk the face of the earth. You could be a great tennis player, but if you are not strong mentally, it doesn't matter. So when people come on the court with Rick, it's not a tennis lesson, it's an experience. Yes, he's teaching you the forehand, he's teaching you the backhand. So Rick has extracted greatness from me. That's how I'm able to be his partner, right? He believed in me. Every person, I know he's probably said this multiple times on camera, but people ask him who's his favorite player. It's the person who's across from the net. And that's his answer every time because it's the truth. You know, people show up six, seven, eight in the morning. Why is he out on the court all day? Because he has passion. Oh. Up, up. You know, I love working with Rick and also the players here. You know, it's not just they, when they come here to play, they're playing tennis and they want to be here. You cannot make, you cannot do certain things with each kid the same way as you do with the other one. He finds a way to get around certain things. And when you throw them at Rick or if you even ask Rick himself, he'll tell you exactly what to do. And then you're looking at like, what is this? What is he doing with this? Where is he going with this? You know, so you learn how to be, you know, creative at the same time, but like, you know, not one-sided or not, not just be like, seeing things as a final result, but looking at things as ways to be flexible, to work around things so the player can change themselves and become better. Does that make sense? Well, I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> Eight Grand Slam champions have been coached by him. Five players ranked first place. 322 USTA National Championships. 52 Grand Slam Championship wins. Seven-time USPTA Coach of the Year. Four Hall of Fame inductees. And in 2017, he was the youngest ever to be inducted into the USPTA Hall of Fame. Andy Roddick, he coached. Jennifer Capriati, he coached. Maria Sharapova, which he may ask for a number, he coached. Serena Williams, he coached. Venus Williams, he coached. Look, a lot of fun. Everybody who talked about Rick Macy, uh, including Serena, the first thing they said is, you know, it was it was among the funnest times in their life. Just playing for Rick was was fun. So uh, I just wanted to keep these amazing young women who played these roles. I wanted to keep them laughing, keep it fun, and you know, with the uh, the bowl cut and the mustache and the short shorts, it was, uh, it, was it was it was fun to keep it fun. Yeah. To be a great tennis parent is the kids have to do it because they want to do it. They shouldn't be doing it because you want them to do it or you're living through your kid. I see this so much. It never works and it should be 
a very supportive, loving, motivational situation that you provide for your kid. So you want them to put them in the best environment where they have great competition, great match play, great coaching, okay? But that's one part of it. What happens when they leave the facility? What happens when the door closes at home and you're at the dinner table? I've just seen this stuff ruin vacations, marriages, I've seen it all. It's brutal, okay, to where this thing starts going. Your goal, number one, is to be so supportive and so positive and so motivating, okay? I cannot stress that enough. You know, you gotta know when to hug someone and to kind of kick them in the butt, all right? I think the day will come that both kids might play each other in the finals of a Grand Slam. Uh, Richard's very fortunate. It's lucky you get one in the family, but he has two. Compton, California, to Delray Beach, Florida, so that his daughters, Venus and Serena, could enroll at the Rick Macy Tennis Academy. Both girls are unbelievably competitive. And when you see them play, you can't really pick up on that. You'd have to see them in a competitive situation. But the way they compete, uh, both the girls would run over a broken glass to get to a ball. But Venus uh, is a great ball striker. You know, she's very aggressive. And we're just trying to teach her to use her athletic ability uh, to attack, attack and swarm, not to use that speed defensively. Uh, but her best strength is her competitiveness. Now the little one, you know, because when you have an older sister, the little one's sometimes always forgotten. Serena's probably the best athlete that I've ever had at this academy. She's very natural. She seems like she has all the time in the world to do everything. She knows where you're going to hit it before you do. Just a lot of intangible qualities that really uh, a lot of people can't see, but at championship level, that spells the difference. All the great ones have it. Come on, good balance. Work on your balance. Excellent job of keeping your head up. Good leg, Serena. Good leg. Throw. Let's thank Mr. Rick Macy, Venus Coach, for being here also. You haven't been very demanding. We really appreciate that. My favorite story is she's on the court and she's just standing there and Venus is on the next court. I said, Serena, you got to move your feet. She goes, why? <laughs> now she was a member. She was 11. I go, well, you told me you want to be number one. She goes, I will be number one. And I said, well, how can I get you to move your feet? She goes, Rick, I'm really hungry. I want you to go get me some curly fries out of the <laughs> snack machine, a Pepsi, a Snickers bar. And on the way to work, daddy drove by the stand and they were selling Green Day t-shirts. Can you have Scott wow, get one Green in the morning? Day. And you see that girl over there? I'll make her look slower than molasses. So I had Scott go get the curly fries, the Snicker bar, the Pepsi. The next day I said, don't worry about anything. So she, for one hour, she was moving her feet. It got to be three o'clock and she turned around at me and she goes, you better have that Green Day t-shirt here in the morning, Rick. <laughs> now, I, but I like that. I'm telling you, she's like a character. Congratulations, Rick Macy, for the USPTA Hall of Fame. So proud of you and many, many congratulations. Are so lucky to have Rick Macy joining us here at the Tennis Channel Cadillac desk. How did you like the movie, and do you believe it was an accurate portrayal of you? Well, first off, the the movie's a masterpiece, and it's so spot on. I can't even tell you. It was like it, it blew me away. It really told the true story, and almost everything in there is 100% spot on. I, I loved it. Rick, this must be bringing back so many memories for you. I mean, you've had so many experiences with them at such a pivotal age. When you were at the premiere in Florida and you're getting to see this sort of at this stage, it must make you reflect and look back. How, how was that for you? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was incredible, simply because that was one of the best times of my life. You know, I took a big chance. Uh, Venus and Serena are like my own daughters. Richards was my best friend. To see this come out in a movie, and how John Bernthal played myself. Um, it was incredible. I just, it, yeah, it brought back so many memories, um, but all good. It was so positive. Richard and I were on a mission. Yep. I was going to be denied. And as they say, the, the rest is history. <laughs> let's let's just go back to the beginning because I want to hear it out of your mouth now. When when you first met, and it was you know you had to do the whole pitch and, and try to convince them and vice versa and this whole thing going back and forth. What on earth was going through your mind? Because of course this is this is what would be considered a long shot to work, but you 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 had the belief. Yeah, you know everything in life is in the eye of the beholder, and I tell people what you may see might be different than Rick may see. So there's a whole. Hey! Different... Yeah, I like that. So no, there's listen. 
No, you know, I had Capriati for three years, you know. She was the most dominant junior player ever, won the national of 18 as a 12 year old. So my blueprint for greatness was probably like nobody in the world. Listen, that was a, uh, the, Richard not only had one, he had two. I just saw something and I was on a mission. That doesn't mean I wouldn't do it again because I'm at the stage of my career where I want to make a difference in people's lives. You give me someone that's incredibly positive, no matter what, and has passion, okay, you're going to be able to take a punch. But more importantly, once you get there, you're going to be able to stay there. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you, if you have a great attitude, no matter what, winning, losing, attitude determines altitude. If you have a great attitude, you can do and be whatever you want. Deal? Get your butt out there and work. Let's go. Let's get out there. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's go. Showtime.